Hey, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to take a look at the early 2000s series, Megas XLR. This video was requested by Jim, who tagged me in the post on Twitter. So, let's get started. Cue the intro. Megas SLR was created by George Christick and Jody Schaefer. Christick and Schaefer met each other while attending the School of Visual Arts in New York City. After graduating, they both would land jobs working for MTV. Christick was a writer and story editor for MTV's animation series, Downtown. Schaefer was a character designer for Downtown and a background designer for the MTV animation series, Daria. This is gonna take long. I'm supposed to be somewhere. Oh. Is there another tight pants sale going on at the mall? One weekend while Christic and Schaefer were hanging out, where they would watch Robot Wars and Matt Cross and play video games, an idea popped into their heads about creating a show that had both robots and video games in it. Christic and Schaefer created a cartoon trailer on the PC and transferred it onto a videotape. While attending Comic Con, they ran into Cartoon Network executive Linda Samisky, who was just about to leave a panel. Christic went up to Linda and gave her the video trailer. After that initial exchange, he assumed he wouldn't hear anything from her ever again. But three months later she called them and told them that she was interested in their idea and jody and chris and anthony and i and a few other people got together and, and did a small trailer small pilot mm -hmm. and um we put it on videotape so it tells you how long ago this was VCR, VHS. <laughs> and uh i export from a pc to VHS. yes VHS. back in the day man With yeah <laughs> oh man back in the 90s um so yeah i just ambushed linda who kind of knew us from sva she was a teacher um, at the time, she was director of programming for Cartoon Network, and I just jammed it into her hand after she was running from a panel, and I was like, okay, I'll never hear from her. And then, you know, as we talked about, like, we got a call later, and that became Megas, so, yeah. After that, they did a small pilot called Lowbrow, which was part of Cartoon Network's 2002 summer contest to see what Cartoon Pilot would become a full series. Lowbrow was one of the winners and would become a full series two years later. Your mom's so gonna kill you. An all new episode, Megas XLR, Saturday nights at 9. Mischief weighs a ton. Where do I get one of those? Only Toonami. Megas SLR premiered on Cartoon Network's Toonami Action Block on May 1st, 2004. The series lasts for two seasons with a total of 26 episodes. The series follows a guy from New Jersey named Coop who's voiced by David DeLewis and his best friend Jamie voiced by Steve Bloom. Yeah, come on. You got any more? We need more bad guys to smash. Coop finds Megas in the junkyard and fixes it up and attaches his car to it.
Your mom's so gonna kill you. Megas came from the year 3037, where the people of Earth were at war against an alien race known as the Glorfs. Earth was losing the war, so in a desperate attempt to save the planet, the humans stole a prototype mecha robot from the Glorfs and modified it into a powerful war machine, and also renaming it the Mechanized Earth Guard Attack System, or Megas for short. Their plan was to use the time traveling device called the Time Flex to send Megas two years into the past, where the last major battle happened. But before the plan could be set into motion, the Glorus attacked Magus and the damaged robot is sent to a junkyard in New Jersey by accident where it remained until Coop found it. Anything in that pile, two bucks. I doubt that whole pile is worth more than two bucks. Whoa, what's that? No idea. Two bucks, huh? I'll take it. Oh man. A mecha pilot from the future named Kiva, who was voiced by Wendy Lee, came back in time to retrieve Megas. But Coop modified a time flex control unit, so she stuck there until she can fix it, while also having to help Coop and Jamie fend off aliens from taking Megas and defend Jersey City. You know, if um Coop is not destroying the city himself. Huh. I saved the world after all. The series managed to have a great balance between both comedy and action. Coop and Jamie's carefree and laid-back personalities are a great balance to Kiva's headstrong personality. The series also referenced things and characters from popular video games and anime series like Star Blazers Yamato, Sonic, G-Force, Mario, and Sailor Moon. How was I supposed to know they could do that? Dibs on the one in yellow. The show also had a couple of running gags, like destroying a logo that's totally not a parody of MTV. Our brand new high-tech satellite station is online. Now we can beam Pop TV to every television worldwide. 24-7 shows about rock stars remodeling your house. Pop TV will be here all day. Or destroying buildings that were always conveniently empty. But I think my favorite gag is the random buttons Coop has in his car. Idiot! That was the Tachyon Beacon! The Glorf can find us now! Whoops! No smashing? But I like smashing. No smashing. Okay, okay. No smashing. Uh... How about... this? That wasn't smashing now, was it? <sighs> Megas SLR took two years to produce. A typical episode usually starts out with scripting, then storyboarding, then creating designs and layouts. After that, they would send it overseas for animating and coloring. Then once that's done, they would add sound effects and voices. Some of the characters in Megas SLR were based on real people Christic and Schaefer knew in real life. Coop is actually based off one of their friends who lives in Jersey. And Goat is also based on a guy named Goat who lives in Jersey. There were a couple of things that led up to the show ending. In a 2019 interview on the Waffle Press YouTube channel, Jody Schaefer explained how Megas SLR was competing for the same audience as Ben 10 and Teen Titans. I actually did a really quick Google search and I was surprised to see that like, there was people in the Philippines selling like drink toppers, drink toppers. that they <laughs> gave out as part of oh, like, yeah. kids, like Jollibee's. Yep, Jollibee was the only was the only franchise that, that picked up our merchandising option. Real talk, that was one of the reasons why uh, at at the time, one of the reasons we were get we did get canceled was because we they also had Teen Titan the original Teen Titans and Ben Ten were going out like and th those were three properties that were all competing for the same audience and although we were you know like we our ratings were on par with theirs like that that was something people don't realize so we were actually a really popular show go figure but uh, they were Teen Titans and and you know Ben Ten was Sam Register's baby and I said well and at that point. Linda Semensky, who was our executive, she had she had moved on to PBS, so we didn't really have anybody in the upper echelons uh, to to fight for us, and that's just the way the, that's just the nature of the beast. Yeah. George Christick also mentioned on Twitter when Cartoon Network started getting into the live action genre in order to compete with Nickelodeon and Disney Channel. 
this was the nail in the coffin for Megas SLR. Normally when it comes to old shows, there's always a chance for it to come back if there's a large demand for it, which can be determined by the fandom and the ratings from streaming services. Look at Young Justice as an example, but the thing is, Megas SLR was a tax write-off. A Cartoon Network could get in some sort of legal trouble if they tried to revive a show after writing it off in taxes. So the chances of Megas coming back is super slim. Chris Tuck also wrote about this on a Twitter thread. This is what he had to say. Jody Sheffer, and I do not own the rights Cartoon Network does. Cartoon Network is owned by WB Pictures, which I think is now owned by AT&T, I think. We were told many years ago that Cartoon Network wrote Mega's XLR off as a tax loss, and as such can't make any new money off of the IP. Any new deals, new money generated would create some sort of tax issues, and as a result, Cartoon Network has tanked the IP. I'm not sure they even know it's in their library. Jody and I have no say in how Mega's XLR is handled reboots, re-releases, more seasons, etc., as it is not ours. We had plans for a third season, a console-based video game and a feature, all of which we had to abandon when we were shut down, there was very little official Mega's XLR merch, and there are no plans for any new items due to the above tax issues. Jody Sheffer, Chris Prinowski and I would love to bring Mega's XLR back, and we tried for a number of years, but we just couldn't untangle the legal mess, we can't buy the rights back as it would cost millions. We can't launch a Kickstarter campaign, as again, we don't own the rights and we'd have to raise tens of millions just to get the rights back and then have to try and fund, pitch the show, we have no idea if HBO Max can, will stream Mega's XLR. While I could be getting the specifics wrong, as I'm no lawyer, the bottom line is that unless Cartoon Network, WB, AT&T or whoever owns the rights now wants to bring Mega's XLR back, it will probably lay dormant, much like Mega's did, until some brave foolhardy soul can resurrect it. Finally, I'd like to add how stunned and humbled we all are that our 16-year-old show about nerds, gamers and anime, mech fans, basically us, found such an overwhelmingly positive global response, thank you all for digging giant robots as much as we do. Hashtag Megas XLR. The final episode of Megas SLR aired on January 15, 2005. Reruns of the series will continue to air until June 24, 2006. At the time of this recording, George Christick is the story lead at Blizzard and is currently writing for Overwatch 2. Jody Schaefer is a storyboard artist for Bob's Burgers. David DeLewis, the voice of Cooper, starring in a movie called Layover. Steve Bloom, the voice of Jamie, is still a voice actor, with some of his more recent roles being The Huntsman and Monkey Kid, and Yum Yum and Kipo in The Age of the Wonder Beast. Wendy Lee, the voice of Kiva, is also still a voice actor. Her most recent role was Rosalind in The Sky of Six and Archive in the anime series Vivi Flore Eyes. Hey guys, groovy ride. Want a lift? Hey! Okay, dude, let's see what that jalopy can do. What's a jalopy? <laughs> First off the line. Yeah. I'm sure they're feeling pretty silly right now. 